Jason Tiller, our health department director. Good morning again, Jason. Good morning again. I apologize you don't have a printout of this, but I wanted to, to try and update it as much as possible with the uh, most current stuff that we had this morning. Um, and most of this information is, as far as the statistics, comes directly from the KDHE website, so it's all publicly accessible anyway. Um, for Saline County, our total number of tested to date is 713, total negative 692, uh, total positives um, as of last night 21 confirmed plus 4 probable and let me speak for a moment to that confirmed and probable. So in the early days, which sounds kind of odd to say since that was really only about a month and a half, two months ago, um, when uh, widespread testing wasn't available, if there was a case where, say, a spouse was confirmed to have COVID using a lab test, the spouse, the, say the husband was, and then the wife um, became symptomatic, uh, KDHE cre or treated that as a probable case. Uh, for all intents and purposes, they assumed that, it, that they had COVID-19 uh, since testing wasn't widely available. And so those we tracked them and monitor them as such, but since they weren't confirmed cases by, uh, by laboratory confirmation, uh, those weren't reported. KDHE last Thursday decided to start reporting those, um, and so now they're showing up in our case counts on their website, um, which is why there's that small discrepancy uh, as far as when we report confirmed uh, versus probable. We shouldn't have any other probables that come up uh, since there has been sufficient testing capability, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute, um, to be able to test and confirm anybody that is uh, symptomatic or has potentially been a contact. Uh, percent positive of our testings is 3.5%, 3, 3 and that percentage we want to stay low. Our lab testing rate, however, continues to increase, increase which is good, uh, is now 13.15 per 1,000. Um, and as more people are tested, um, then we'll see that rate go up, which is a rate that we do want to see increase, which means we're having more testing happening in the area. Uh, to date, hospitalizations were eight, deaths were two. And at this point, out of the um, rest of the cases, there are only two of them that we are still monitoring, and the rest have essentially recovered at this point. Um, this information, like I said, is, is available for uh, public viewing on KDHE's website. They were, up until yesterday, updating that seven days a week, but now they're only updating it Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays due to the staff time it takes to con uh, compile all that information. Uh, an update on the Walmart testing that's been going on in this area. Uh, we finally received results over the weekend for the last couple of clinics they've had. and. Although we did not receive a total number of people tested because it was from, you know, people from multiple counties around the area, for our county it was about 100 people that were tested and all of those results were negative. They are scheduled to be here again Tuesday through Friday this week and we will see what the weather has to say about whether they conduct that drive through or not. Uh, right now, as far as testing capacity for COVID, I, I think that we are looking pretty good. Um, us as well as Salina Regional, Salina Family, and Maori Clinic all have uh, testing capacity. And we'll be meeting uh, later on this week or beginning of next week to kind of talk about additional uh, testing strategies um, as the summer kind of wears on. And if we you know, do start to see a second wave, um, as, as has been mentioned, um, our contact tracing capacity right now looks pretty well. I've had four dedicated staff to do contact tracing, which is where when a person is confirmed positive, they then investigate where they've been, um, who they've talked to, who they've had prolonged contact with, contact those people uh, to discuss uh, if they've had any symptoms, advise them if they need to quarantine, those types of things. Uh, we do have additional capacity if we need it through a retired nurse who's, um, who has worked for us before as well as uh, trained contact tracers that the state is training and can be deployed um, if we request it through emergency management. 
Uh, upcoming, I already mentioned the uh, meeting with the providers to discuss future testing. Um, and then we'll continue to monitor the community um, as we move through the phases of the governor's plan, uh, depending on, on uh, what she decides to do. Uh, one last uh, thing on here, you know, our first case was March 29th. Um, our last case before yesterday was, I believe, April 29th. Uh, so we had gone about 12 days since our last case, and then last night after our press release was uh, published, uh, we did receive a call of an additional positive, uh, and that's currently being investigated right now. Um, that one, I believe, though, well, We'll have more information out later today after the uh, investigation is done and, and then uh, pertinent details will be in our five o'clock press release. And with that, if there are questions. I have, I have a couple of comments or questions, I guess, in a way. Um, the number that I don't see, I heard you mention it here a little bit here today, recoveries. Okay. Uh, as an example, in, in Sling County, we have 25 cases uh, identified as COVID uh, either positive or probable. Correct. But what is the number again that of recoveries? So it would be, if we add in the probables, then it would be approximately, and not counting the case we had last night, so it would be about 17 recovered. 17, so actually then we would only have uh, eight act active cases in the county. And not necessarily because we had two that were deceased. So when we talk about the status, so 17 recovered, two deceased, um, two that are monitoring. No, hold on, because <laughs> I wasn't adding in the probables at first to that recovered. So that would be 21 recovered, two deceased, and two monitoring for that 25, and then plus the one we got last night. So that would, I, I that got, would be I got down. lost in the translation there a little bit, but it, it, the number is really about six active cases or somewhere five to six. Something like that. If you've about three, actually, three. The okay. probables. Well, I'm sorry, I, and I probably should have clarified. The probables were all from early March or mid March and early April, so they are actually old cases that are already uh, done and gone. Okay, so they're not there, counted. That's the number I'm, I'm sorry, I should have clarified that. Well, that's another number that from uh, KDHE that I would like to see from time to time. You know, they're they've identified uh, what, seven thousand cases. Correct. How many of them are actually active? You know, if you take the the number of deaths away from that and the number of people that have recovered, you know, what, what is the number we're really dealing with? And I don't really ever see that number come out, or at least it, if it does, it, it escapes me. But And that's not a number that they've published yet, and that's a number that's widely asked about. Um, and they, and part of it is the definition of recovered, like many of these definitions, but the definition of recovered especially has changed significantly and it continues to kind of fluctuate what it actually means to be recovered as we learn more. Um, originally, recovered meant that you had two confirmed tests 24 hours apart that were negative. And that quickly became apparent that it wasn't going to be possible to do that because testing of just symptomatic people was hard to do. And then it became um, when your symptoms resolved. But as we learn more, we've seen some people that have had some residual effects from COVID. And so it's hard to say, okay, well, have your symptoms completely resolved? No, you still have some issues going on. Well, is it due to, to COVID or is it due to just some uh, potential tissue damage that may have been done by the disease? So that definition of recovered has, has not really been locked down, which makes it hard for the state and I think for us to say 100% um, that this many people um, are recovered. That's our, our, our best working definition right now is that they have either um, been more than 10 days since the start of their disease, um, the majority of their symptoms have resolved, um, but it's still kind of a working definition at this point. So in other words, it's not like a take the cast off of my broken arm and I can go, go about my regular business. Uh, right, yeah, it, we can't do it, just do an x-ray and say, nope, it's healed and, and you're 100% you're good to go. I get so. it. Okay, also, uh, when uh, Saline County Health Department does a testing on an individual, where does, is that a sent to Topeka, in a lab, or where does that go and how long does it take to get the test results? Okay, as of right now, we haven't been doing any testing. The health department hasn't. The primary care providers have. 
We have testing kits now uh, available that we are um, planning to use if we have another outbreak or if we have direct contacts that have to be tested. Um, as far as where the test or where the sample goes to be tested, um, it can go to KDHE lab. There are several private labs like LabCorp and Quest that can run those tests now. Um, and getting the results back initially was taking anywhere up to 10 days sometimes to get results back, um, regardless of what lab it went to. Now, I think with KDHE, it's probably about 48 hours to get back. Um, the private labs, they've gotten much faster, I think, about coming back with, with results. Um, if the hospital, say for instance, they test somebody, it gets sent to LabCorp, as soon as LabCorp, for instance, gets a positive, they call the hospital and the hospital calls us. So there's that reporting mechanism in place. Um, of course, not as much emphasis put on negative results. Those are sent through just kind of the normal lab reporting chain so that we don't get those as quickly um, because the focus is, of course, getting the positives to us so that we can then start to investigate. The, the good thing, though, that has been throughout this is that when somebody was ill enough to see a provider and to be tested, um, they were also advised or at that point to quarantine, of course, until their results uh, were received. Um, and so that has been extremely helpful of people just staying home when they're sick, even with the, you know, with some people that may not have been tested for COVID but were symptomatic, uh, just staying home until they were over their illness and not going to work and spreading it amongst others or in the public has been extremely uh, helpful overall. So in, in other words, I mean, I guess I had the uh, perception that the Saline County Health Department was the one that was doing the testing, and that is not the case. Those are done at Solana Regional or, or the doctor's office? Or right. Originally, um, when testing started, you had to be symptomatic, and then because it was still flu season, you had to have a, a rapid flu test to make sure that it wasn't actually flu, and there's some other testing that had to be done, which most health departments are not set up to do, and we're also not set up to diagnose um, flu and those types of things because um, most health departments, unlike a doctor's office, you know, we don't see acute care. Um, we have, and then again, too, the supplies for testing were, were uh, greatly strained, so um, us trying to compete for the primary care providers uh, where people needed to be seen who were actually sick um, was not, you know, not the best strategy either. So us, like many other health departments, focused on doing all the contact tracing, um, following up with those that were identified um, in that period while they were waiting on their results, and then letting the primary care um, handle the bulk of the diagnosing and the, the testing. Okay, I appreciate those uh, clarifications. Um, I've kind of hogged the, the floor here for a little bit, so are there any other questions uh, from commissioners or comments? If not, uh, Jason, thank you for your hard work. I, I do want to uh, tell the public to, to st this isn't over by a long stretch of the imagination. Please be vigilant. Uh, follow the rules. Uh, next week is going to be phase two uh, from the governor's office. And, uh, you know, this is kind of like the cast off your broken arm. This doesn't mean it's over. You, you've still got to practice uh, the social distancing and, and everything you can to do your individual part in helping us get past this really, really difficult time. So thanks Absolutely. to everyone for that uh, vigilance. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Have a good day.